Hello, everybody. Welcome to Geek Impulse. I'm Josh Sexton here with Gabriel, who's a director of a very awesome documentary about a young girl who is an upcoming boxer who's phenomenal. I've seen the documentary, saw her story, as well as you know her in action a little bit from the documentary, obviously. And But I, I don't want to take away from that. So why don't you go ahead, Gabriel, introduce yourself, uh, a little bit of, uh, about your background, you know, what got you into all this, and then we'll We'll get going. Nice. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me here. Um, so like you said, my name is Gabriel and I am a film director. I, I directed a short documentary called Team Maryland, uh, which follows a 12 year old female boxer named Marilyn Gonzalez, who loses the Junior Olympics 2018. And I followed her for about a little over a year as she fights in and out of the ring to uh, try to come back and try to win the Junior Olympics 2019. So the documentary, it's uh, just around 27 minutes. And uh, right now we're just going around film festivals, finding distribution, and it's been a glorious and very fun ride so far. So I just appreciate you bringing me on uh, to this show, to your show, just to talk about it and to just spread spread it around. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, even though it's 27 minutes long, it's, it's very impactful. There's a lot of feeling involved. You know, you really do a good job of, in my opinion, really, bringing the audience in to the story and making them feel as if you know hey they they are a part of this journey as well so what was it that originally you know got you to want to do this definitely yeah i think the you so you talked about like it being very um feeling based or emotional and i think that was the reason why i wanted to pursue it i'm not a boxer and i'm not a 12 year old girl from from Watts, um, but I really felt so connected to the story because I really felt related. I felt like the family story was something that had res that really resonates with me because um, you know, for many of the people who haven't seen the documentary, uh, it follows this this young fighter named Marilyn who's twelve, but it really is a portrait about her entire family and her parents, especially who helped. Um, really make her dreams come true. It's her dream to go to the Junior Olympics. And she has this entire team of people who are helping her achieve what she wants to, to achieve. Um, and in my experience, you know, I grew up the youngest of seven kids with a single mom. And what we had to do was fight together to get where we are today. And just that emotional aspect um, alone was, the, was a, more than enough to bring me um, inspiration and want and and bring me to their house to start documenting their story so it wasn't enough for her just to be a boxer because um i'm not an athlete but um it was really that that element that brought me to wanting to make this story um to, to wanting to capture it and to, to wanting to champion it as well yeah so you you have you wanted let me ask you this i i did do a little bit of research but maybe uh you know it's escaping me did you win any um, award yet in the film festivals? So we've been to several Oscar qualifying film festivals, which we have won a few awards at a couple of them, but they they um, we haven't won awards at all of them. Um, and right now we are still in the dot in the um, festival circuit, so we still have more festivals to go. Um, so I can keep you updated if anything new happens there. Yeah, def yeah definitely. I mean, I, I like I said, I do remember you winning awards, but I wasn't sure which festival perhaps it was and things like that. And obviously you're going to keep making those rounds. Now, what is it that continues to drive you to, to push this out there? You know, what is it that makes you so inspired to continue to want to tell this story? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when I was filming the story, um, you know, I had, like I said, I had a connection with this family because they reminded me of my family. So I almost saw like my mom when I was filming the parents getting ready for work. And then when Marilyn was taking care of her younger sister, it's like, I, I felt like I was shooting my sister, like, you know, because it was, I felt very related in that aspect, but, but now being on the other end of the spectrum and being in a place where I'm no longer documenting, documenting, but I'm sharing it. What inspires me is that I want other people to feel the same type of inspiration that I felt when I was filming it because that is something that, you know, I think the, let me to backtrack a little bit. I, th I think the family really inspires a lot of people. 
and they inspire people in their circle. And this documentary, this documentary is a way for us to amplify their voice and, and have them inspire people, not just within their local community, but also throughout like the world. So that is something that, that motivates me because I know this is a story that has to be told. Um, it's a story about family and second chances. And that is a message that I think the world kind of needs to hear right now is that we all have a second chance to make the world a little better. And there's, you know, every day there's, there are crazy things happening in the news and you can, you can definitely find something that will make you feel like the world is just at its lowest these yeah, days. Like it's ending or something, it's imploding. Yeah, and you know, this family and this story, they are examples that no matter how bad things can get, you can flip it around and make it a, an, ex, an incredible learning experience. So I hope that people just take that away. Yeah, and I, I think it's a, a great uh, thing to see, you know, parents supporting those aspirations, those dreams of their children, you know, and <clears throat> definitely the mother is definitely involved and she um, really wants to see her daughter succeed, but you could definitely tell she's coming to it from more of a, a motherly uh, perspective, whereas the dad's like, let's go, we're, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's taking her to places, I know they all like travel together, mm -hmm. but I see him a lot more like trying to get her to stay motivated and, and help her, you know, progress and finding ways in which he can, you know, uh, connect with the right people. Yeah. And she can continue to, to grow. So what, um, wow. where, where is she at now as far as um, qualify? I know, I think I saw her Instagram page and I think she's trying to go to the 2024 Olympics, correct? So yeah, she qualified yet, and like, how? When does that qualifying go? So we can all check in on that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, firstly, great observation about the parents. I think you kind of hit it on the nail there, because um, that's like really who they are. And then, when it comes to the Olympics, Maryland, uh, she recently fought in the Junior Olympics 2022 or 2021. I'm skipping a whole year. Uh, she unfortunately did not win but she did she placed bronze and that was a huge achievement for her nice. um and uh she is still on the road to wanting to be part of the 2024 paris olympics and the 2028 uh los angeles olympics so she will be able to qualify uh, i think starting this year um definitely starting next year as well depending on you know how her rankings end up um but she is connected with team usa she's she's trying to be part of the official roster. So I think it's just a matter of time. I think in the next next year or so, uh, more progress will, will be made. What have you found have been some of the challenges that she is currently facing? But on top of that, you know, what challenges did you face in trying to capture this journey? Yeah, kind so challenges that she's, she's currently faced, so challenge, yeah. So I think today it's, it's very interesting because some of the challenges that the family faced um, when I was filming are, I don't know if they're as present anymore. Um, they've grown so much and they've put out so much good energy into the world that I feel like the, the, um, the feedback that they're getting is like, is I don't know. I just, I, I know that they've grown a lot as a family and I've, I've seen a lot of awesome um, kind of changes happen in their life. To, to stick to your question, um, Marilyn is now studying in, in Colorado, actually. So she goes to a boarding school in Colorado. She no longer uh, studies in Watts. And that's for an opportunity at a better education. Uh, she got a full ride scholarship to a boarding school out there. Nice. And currently, that is probably a, you know, a challenge that she is going through just because uh, it's a new environment, new students, and um, is, I, I, I don't know if I can consider it a challenge, but just a new change, a new chapter in her life that she's navigating through. Uh, and I, I've, in talking with her, it sounds like she appreciates her home even, you know, even more now that she's not around it all the time. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an interesting aspect that she's going through and, um, and challenges we had film while making the film uh, there were many challenges. I think the hardest aspect of the documentary was the editing process because we had a year and a half of footage and we 
you know, you could take the story in so many different directions. Um, it could have been about what it's like to be a female in boxing and in a, in a sport that's very male dominated, which is a very interesting, uh, you know, perspective of it. Uh, it could have been more about the Mexican culture as well. And it could have been about Watts, but, um, you know, the editing was such a challenge because it, I had to, my team and I had to ask ourselves, what is this movie really about? And then go ahead and find all of the clips that we shot that kind of circled back to that main mission that we had. So that was a challenge. And then another challenge was that I was a student when we were filming this story. So I just graduated college uh, this past May, 2021. And I, start, I did start this documentary back in the summer of 2018. So I spent a year and a half following the family, uh, just a little more, a few more months after that, we finished the documentary and started submitting it to festivals. And then now we're here. So I, there are plenty of moments when I was skipping class, I had a season pass to go to every football game. And I didn't go to a single game because I was over, always over at their house, pushing finals back, you know, and just all the crazy stuff of what it's like to be a full-time student with an on-campus job doing organizations and you know making this film as well so it was a crazy time and I'm and I'm very just grateful that it, it all happened so yeah yeah I mean obviously you know that's it's not easy right going to college as well as um you know doing this documentary and in a way I can <laughs> understand because I I'm in a um, master's program in college but I'm running a business you know, doing these things and it's, it's wow. challenging to juggle, right? But yeah. Somehow, wow. You know, you were able to push through that and create something like this that is able to, you know, impact a lot of people that watch it. So with that being said as well, you know, what is next for you? Is there like, you know, a Maryland documentary too? You mm -hmm. know, um, are you going to get, if she gets into the Olympics, are you going to get tickets? Like, you know, I, I would think, you do, right? So tell, tell us a little bit about that, man. I would be on the front row, like screaming her name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's next? I, I'm not sure um, if another version, another Team Maryland is going to happen. Like, I think a lot of people ask about us making an extension of the, of the documentary, something that's, that follows her to the Paris Olympics, um, potentially. And right now we're putting a pause on the film just because everything I want to say as like a, as a filmmaker, um, and I feel like the part of their story that I gravitate to the most has already been said in the form of this short documentary. So again, it's about family. It's about the miracle of second chances. And I'm not a boxer. So the only way I could see myself kind of following her to the Paris Olympics would be, is, would be if there was a new element to their story that hasn't been said that is now introduced because to me the the olympics can have the same stakes as the junior olympics you know like there's no story that's too small uh and for her and her age the junior olympics kind of feels like the olympics anyway so i think it's i think it's it'll be you know those two competitions um it's not about the competition it's about uh, the story getting there um and also you know the film where it is right now it, like i mentioned it's going to uh, a few festivals um, but it's also getting uh, distribution. So in January of 2022, it'll be uh, broadcasted on PBS. Nice. And because they picked it up. And then we also have a, so we got that with PBS. And then the New Yorker actually uh, picked it up as well. And it'll be releasing on the 15th for Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, 15th yeah. of this month. So less than, less, you know, less if I do the math correctly, it's six days. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of what's happening with the film right now. And, and personally, in my life, I am growing more as a filmmaker and as a person. Uh, I love documentaries. So I'm, I'm currently still pursuing the documentary, branded documentary, documentary and commercial field. Uh, I love narrative, um, but I think, you know, I'm just following what my heart tells me or two right now. So continuing to pursue projects and trying to find very resilient, inspiring subjects. Yeah, that's awesome. And what is it that maybe you want the audience to know uh, that you haven't said just yet when, you know, watching this documentary and this journey? Oh, that's a great question. Because I feel like I put out like everything. It, it feels as if I put out like everything into the documentary, but 
of course, there's so much that we had to cut out. Um, one thing that we haven't said, I might have to get back to you on that one. I think I think the the first thing that popped into my into my mind when you said that was uh, was about parents, and I think I really admire how Jorge and Araceli, Marilyn's parents, are so present with with their daughters. So I think that you know I'm not a parent, but I hope a lot of people can be inspired by their parenting style. I'm not saying they're perfect, and I don't know. Um, everything but in the time that I was with them and you know I'm I'm family friends with them today I was just I just talked to Jorge on the phone right before we, we hopped on this but I would say that that is a quality I would I, I think should be really um, honored is just spending quality time with your children or with someone that you care about and you can do it as a parent or you can do it as a, as a sibling you can spend quality time that way um, but I think the idea that quality time is is something that can make or break um, the the health of of your of someone you love, I I think then it needs to be taken with a lot of um, it needs to be taken to heart for sure. So, um, one one question that I ask, I, I'm sure journalists asked this before. I haven't don't see it very often. Um, it's probably you know kind of a basic question, but it's one that I like to ask. And that is, mm -hmm. what is a question you would have liked me to ask that I have yet to ask you? Uh, <laughs> man, this is a good, I don't know why this is a stumper. I would be curious to know, maybe um, how did you meet the subjects? Could have been, could be one. And then are you gonna have me answer it? Exactly. <laughs> that's the cheat code that is the cheat code of all man <laughs> um okay yeah that, so i so you know i met jorge um i met the family very randomly i was shooting a short film in watts los angeles uh in the summer of 2018 and it was just me and a couple of friends making a movie in a park nothing crazy and all, you know, we're filming there and uh, all of a sudden I see this man in my peripherals and I'm just like, okay, who's this guy just like standing around? Is he going to tell us to leave or are we in trouble or something? And, um, you know, we say cut and he kindly walks up and starts speaking to us in Spanish. And at the time I was taking Spanish too. And I, I really wanted to practice my language skills and he seemed really nice. And I was like, that's just, I'm just going to respond here. And he was like, hey, like, what are you guys doing? And I said, hey, we're making a short film. Like, how are you doing? What's going on? And he walked up to me and started telling me that, you know, I see you have a video camera. I have a daughter who boxes. He showed me his daughter, you know, Marilyn's Instagram page. And he, he basically said, like, um, would you ever be game to make a video about here sometime? And we were in the middle of a shoot, so I didn't have too much time to respond. And I said, just hit me up over Instagram and I'd love to talk with you more. And most of the time when someone, when I tell someone to hit me up later, because I've run into many people on the street who say like, hey, like you have a video camera, can you make a video? Like, <laughs> I'm not, that's not new to me, but none of them, like 99% of the people like don't end up reaching out afterwards. But in this 1% of the time, I ended up receiving a long message from his eldest daughter, Araceli, who said, hey, we don't have any money. Um, but my sister's story is really special. And I think that this could be something um, that, you know, this is something that you're, you're more than welcome to make a documentary about her if you'd like. And uh, I was kind of blown away by how much access and how much permission they were allowing to me. So I basically uh, said when I returned to Los Angeles in the, in the fall for school, I'd love to, I'd love to start. I did a phone interview with Marilyn that summer and kind of just was hooked from there. So I met them very randomly. Uh, because we were there filming a short and uh, Jorge just happened to be driving that route that day and saw us and was like, I'm going to say hello to these guys. So, yeah, yeah you know, you, that's, that's an awesome story. I like that. You know, these types of stories don't ever always get told because, you know, nobody asks the question or forgets to ask the question. And so that's another reason for me asking the question in the way in which I did, because uh -huh. I'm hoping that I'll get something more unique like like right now right because yeah. what it does is it, that the way you respond to that question is all about perception and, and it's subjective so 
your perception of that question is different from right. the question I asked, right? Um, so right. that's why I ask it because I, I don't know all the questions to ask. And so by doing that, I usually find a lot of beauty in that. So I really appreciate you uh, participating <laughs> with that question. Oh, of course. Thank you for, that was a great, yeah, you're right. It, there is something about perception there because then I, I answer it how I want it, like how yeah. it makes me feel comfortable. I answer it the way I, I would want to answer it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I, again, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I know you got a lot of things to do. So before we go, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell people where they can find you, you know, keep up to date with you uh, as far as what you're doing and the journeys you're on and then yeah. where they might be able to, I know you said the New Yorker and PBS later on, um, any other ways in which they can interact with the documentary and Maryland? Definitely. Yeah. So you can follow the documentary on Instagram at team Maryland film. Um, it's Maryland with an E and it's, we have a website that has the same name, teammarylandfilm.com. Uh, Maryland's Instagram is Maryland CGH. Those are her uh, initials. And uh, my Instagram is Gabriel Garano. Uh, you can fall, you can find the film um, this, like I said, September 15th for Hispanic Heritage Month on the New Yorker in January 22nd, I believe for PBS. Uh, where it'll be broadcasted at your local station. Um, and, you know, we'll have all the information up on the Instagram and the website, but uh, Instagram is the fastest way to get information just because it's so accessible and easy. So if you're, if you want to learn more about the film, I'd go there, follow us or don't, if you want and, and keep your ratio, that's all good, but uh, you can, you can just keep up to date there and we'd be more than happy to, you know, spread the word about whatever updates happen with this project. Awesome. Well, Gabriel, thank you so much for being here. It's a, it was a beautiful story. It was great introdu you know, intro introduction to who you are and what you're doing and being able to chat with you about all that. Um, so I do appreciate it. I, I, I know that, you know, it's not easy um, being, uh, you know, making time to, to do these things. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thanks, Joshua. I appreciate it. Right. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Take care, man.